Hey, what is up YouTube? And while we eagerly await a new jailbreak utility, in today's video we are going to take an in-depth look at Pangu and Keen Labs history and discuss the potential and likelihood of a new public jailbreak utility being on the horizon. Is it likely that Pangu will begin a comeback and return to the jailbreaking scene anytime soon? Are there any other players involved? Let's discuss. Again today, we are going to discuss the means of exactly when and how a new jailbreaking utility may surface and from which jailbreak teams. While there is a ton of stuff going on in the background along the lines of a jailbreak for an older firmware, we are first going to discuss which teams or developers may be responsible for an early iOS 11 or iOS 10.3.3 jailbreak. And to do this, we first need to take an in-depth look at Pangu and Keen Labs history. While Pangu and KeenLab are not the only major jailbreak teams at play here, they are the two most likely to release a new jailbreak utility in the near future. But before we get too far into the analysis, let's start from the beginning. As many of you know, Pangu is a mobile security research team whose big claim to fame has been the release of many popular jailbreak utilities. Pangu first entered the public jailbreaking scene in June of 2014, releasing a fully untethered jailbreak utility for iOS 7.1 to 7.1.2. Later that same year, on October 22nd of 2014, Pangu released a second utility, this one being for iOS 8 to 8.1. This year in particular, they were the first to jailbreak the newly released firmware, but as we'll talk about a little bit later, they were not the only team able to create a fully functional jailbreak for iOS 8. Proceeding that jailbreak, Pangu's next utility was released for iOS 9 to 9.1 on January 18th of 2015. This was yet another fully untethered jailbreak for the iPhone 4S all the way up to the iPhone 6S Plus, which was the latest device at the time. For those of you who recall, this jailbreak included an option to install the PP app, which fundamentally was a Chinese piracy app used to install apps from the App Store for free. And just as an interesting note, this guys was during the time when Apple only allowed developers to sign apps. Non-developers had no way of doing this, not even for the 7 day period we are allotted now. Anyway, this just meant that the developers of the jailbreak utilities had one more step to do and that was to bypass the sandbox. Now this was just yet another exploit that developers had to discover before being able to achieve and release a jailbreak, and in fact this was typically the first step into making one. As jailbreaks typically have an escalation process, this was the first exploit needed in order to escalate the privileges past the sandbox and eventually down the line patching the kernel, but the advantage of doing it this way was we were then able to achieve a fully untethered jailbreak that never expired. The new Sima untethered way which uses a sideloaded app essentially skips the step needed to bypass the sandbox and thus developers can get right into executing their deeper exploits. Anyway moving on, the last and most recent utility Pangu has released is the famous iOS 9.2 to 9.3.3 jailbreak utility released by them on July 24th of 2016. And this was the very first semi-untethered jailbreak that used the sideloaded app, and it did not include the second Chinese piracy app that we saw in the previous jailbreak. Now, we have seen Pangu give quite a few demos along the way as well. Interestingly enough, for those of you who remember, we first saw Pangu give a working demo of an iOS 10 jailbreak while iOS 10 was still in beta, which at the time assured us they were not going to release a post iOS 9.3.3 jailbreak, but would most likely release an early iOS 10 jailbreak, just as they have done in years past. That, as we know, never came to light. Also, notably this year, we saw them earlier give a demo of an iOS 10.3.1 working jailbreak, which they presented at this year's Janus conference. This again was never released to the public, however. And since then, Pangu has remained quiet. Aside from hosting this year's mobile security conference, commonly referred to as MOSEC, they really have yet to do anything noteworthy. They in fact did not even present at their own conference this year, and while this information may seem daunting, it raises a big red flag in my book that they may be working on something in the background, and Pangu has remained silent right up until they release a new jailbreak utility, so this behavior is not surprising. Pangu being a big name in the jailbreaking community is most likely playing a game of chess. They are very strategic and when they release a new jailbreak utility and that is probably the biggest thing holding them back from releasing a new one. They are in essence waiting for the perfect opportunity. But what has been noteworthy are some of Keen Lab's recent achievements. Keen Lab is a mobile security research team who in the past has focused on other side projects such as hacking Android OS and Tesla's. But they, as I've talked about in previous videos, made headlines when they presented a working jailbreak at this year's MOSEC 2017 conference back in June. But again, before we get too far into things, I'm going to start at the beginning and talk a little bit about Keen Lab's history. Now, like I've said, Keen Lab in the past has been known for a lot of things, but public jailbreaking is not one of them. In the past, Keen Lab has most notably been known for hacking Teslas and taking over the car's OS. This has been achieved by them on multiple accounts with different OS versions and various car models. And just this year, they did it again by hacking the Model S and taking control of various systems within the car. 
But on the jailbreaking side of things, the first time Keen Lab was on my radar was when it was rumored in the past that Keen Lab was working with Pangu on a jailbreak way back during the iOS 8 timeframe. But as you know, Taiji came out with two public jailbreak utility releases that same year, thus may be the reason why the project was scrapped and never released to the public. But still, looking back, jailbreaking was in its prime during iOS 8 and was when we saw the most jailbreak utilities released for a single firmware. Now, like I said before, instead of iOS, KeenLab in years past has mostly been focused on hacking the Android operating system, and this is proven when we saw them present their findings at MOSEC 2016. They did a whole presentation about what they have discovered in the years past. But it is interesting to note that KeenLab by no means is a new player to the scene. They have been in the background, and it wasn't until this year when they demoed an iOS 11 Beta 2 jailbreak utility that they really made headlines in the jailbreaking community. It seems now their focus may be fully shifted towards iOS. Also at the same presentation, they not only presented an iOS 11 Beta 2 jailbreak utility, they also presented an iOS 10.3.2 jailbreak utility. Now in my previous videos, I've stated that it's unclear if these exploits were to be used to create an iOS 10.3.x utility or be saved for an early iOS 11 jailbreak utility. But with iOS 11 scheduled to be released relatively soon, it's looking more and more likely that Keen Lab is saving their jailbreak for when iOS 11 is released to the public early this September. That is, if they intend to release it at all, again, this was just a demo and was not a commitment to a public release. But with that being said, if Pangu is ever likely to return to the jailbreaking scene, it will be with iOS 11. And while I can't confirm anything, it's looking likely that because of Pangu and Keen Lab's close relationship, they may be working on an early iOS 11 jailbreak together as partners. Not only has it been rumored in the past that they potentially were working on a jailbreak together, since the start of Pangu's most set conference, Keen Lab has presented there every year. Since we have yet to receive a jailbreak for iOS 10.3.3 yet, and iOS 11 is right around the corner from being released, it's looking like we may never see one for iOS 10.3.3. As I'll talk about a little bit later in this video, it's looking likely we may receive a jailbreak utility for earlier firmwares, but due to the security improvements with iOS 10.3.3 and 10.3.2 for that matter, we may never receive a jailbreak utility for those firmwares. Plus, there's what many refer to as a toxic community surrounding public jailbreak releases. This is one of the main reasons why jailbreaking developers have left the community and or do not release their findings to the public. While one person can't change these facts, I think being aware of the situation may make some of us take things more seriously if a new jailbreak were to ever be released. But even with all that said, I still have to argue my point that I've made in my past videos that jailbreaking is far from dead. Jailbreaking is getting harder, yes, but it's proven time and time again that it's far from impossible. Mostly because it's the jailbreak community and anything can happen. And although we have yet to receive a real jailbreak utility in ages, as we've seen recently, new exploits and new vulnerabilities are still being discovered and new jailbreak demos are still being performed, meaning a new jailbreak utility is bound to be on the horizon. And for example, as I've said earlier, there is a ton of stuff going on in the background pertaining to jailbreaking on older firmwares. As many of us know, the new Phoenix jailbreak was released for iOS 9.3.5, but considering that only pertained to a select group of individuals that were still on that firmware, I did not emphasize my efforts on covering that in depth. But with the recent exploit releases from many jailbreak developers, I figured I would discuss if there's any truth behind some of these recent developments for iOS 10 firmwares. In recent news, a new 64-bit kernel-level exploit was released for iOS 10.3.1 and earlier firmwares of iOS 10. While this exploit is a kernel-level exploit, it is not enough to create a jailbreak by itself. Others are needed alongside this one to create a new jailbreak utility which could install Cydia. But this does give some hope that a new and more stable jailbreak for iOS 10 might be coming out. It however won't be available for the latest iOS 10.3.3 or iOS 10.3.2 for that matter, as the exploit was patched in iOS 10.3.2. The exploit does have some credibility from other security researchers, but for now I won't go too in-depth until more developments are made pertaining to it. Along the same lines, there are currently some developers claiming they are releasing a new jailbreak utility soon, but due to their credibility, I am skeptical and won't believe it until they prove themselves by actually releasing it. But as we eagerly await a new jailbreak utility, the best policy for now is to stay on the lowest possible firmware that you can in order to ensure that you have the best chances of having a future jailbreak support your iOS version. And most importantly, avoid iOS 10.3.3 at all costs. Again, it's becoming a common practice for Apple to immediately patch a new jailbreak within the first few days of it being released, meaning once a new jailbreak utility arises, we have a limited amount of time to update and jailbreak our devices. This just means for the jailbreaking community, we have to stay on top of when a new jailbreak might be coming out, and thus is one of the biggest reasons why we do this series.
Well, guys, I really hope this gave you some insight on the future of jailbreaking. And although we have yet to receive a real jailbreak in ages, there is a ton of background stuff in the works, which leads me to believe that jailbreaking is far from over. Jailbreaking is getting harder, yes, but it's proven time and time again that it's far from impossible. As we discussed today, it's looking very likely that Pangu and Keen Lab may have something in the works for an early iOS 11 jailbreak. And if Pangu ever plans to return to the jailbreaking scene, releasing an early on iOS 11 jailbreak would be the best possible way and best time for them to do so. But again, before I go, don't forget to subscribe to stay fully updated on any further developments such as new jailbreak utility or new exploits or new jailbreak demos being performed. And if you guys want to be updated more often, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. And in the end, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, this is Tony signing out.